Yeah, go for it. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I think today is the 20th of June, 2020, so we're still in the middle of our COVID lockdown. Um, so we've got even more time than normal to play with Gardner engines. My objective today is to discuss the, the spanners that we use on Gardner's. Now, this is quite a, a subtle subject, so I'm going to have to ask you to pay particular attention here. And I'm going to try and go as slow and do as much explanation as I can. Um, in these islands, as you know, in our everyday use, we're using uh, um, metric spanners. Uh, modern cars, modern vehicles, uh, modern machineries, all uh, metric now after the change to the metric system. But there are no metric nuts on a In the later models, yes, but not in the naturally aspirated engines uh, that we deal with here. There are no metric nuts on a Gardner engine, with the possible exception of the main terminal nuts on the starter motor. Sometimes they can be 10 mil. So um, <clears throat> what do we come across then? I can check here an ordinary metric spanner. You'll get them anywhere in your local DIY store or even um, automotive store. And here we have a set of metric sockets. Now, if you're working at Gardner engines, you'll kind of get away with those. But it's not really the proper way to do it and you'll very soon become frustrated. The nuts and fittings on a Gardner engine are invariably imperial. Now, this is where life gets a bit tricky. Um, there's imperial and there's imperial. There's the American imperial system and there's the British imperial system. Now, <clears throat> Way back in the uh, in the eighteen hundreds, maybe before that, certainly before that, um, each manufacturer in the British Isles had their own nut system, their own thread profile. It was a complete mess. You couldn't take a nut from one manufacturer's machine and use it on another manufacturer's machine. They just they had different pitches, different profiles, different sizes. The whole thing was a mess. And along came uh, a chap called Whitworth. Now, I confess I don't have his date to hand, but I think it was in the mid-1800s mid or something like that. And he came along and he said, look, everybody, this is a complete mess. We need to standardize on screw threads and uh, nut sizes and so on. So Hitworth, Whitworth devised um, a thread profile and a pitch. And to this day, that's called the Whitworth thread and the Whitworth nut size. Now there's another nut size that are very often used in Gardner engines called British Standard Fine, BSF. The reason why they're used is that the finer thread is better where there's a lot of vibration involved and you will find a lot of those on Gardner engines. So we will typically get um, half inch BSF, half inch um, Whitworth, uh, quarter Whitworth quarter BSF and 5 16th and so on. Um, <clears throat> this is all part of the imperial system. But where life gets a bit complicated is uh, there's actually two imperial systems. There's Whitworth, as I've mentioned, and there's AF. Now, some people refer to the AF as American fine, but in fact, that's not quite right. AF stands for across the flat. Whenever they're stipulating a nut, they'll say that this nut here is half inch because it's half inch across. Well, that in fact isn't half inch. That one there is, oh my goodness. It uh, looks to me like seven eighth or something like that. Um, so whenever you pick up a spanner, check. If you're lucky, the AF spanner will actually say on it. So this one here is one inch AF. If I take my rule, you'll see that that is one inch across across the flat. Now, um, 
we find that AF spanners are not so useful. Really, it's much better to stick to proper Whitworth spanners. You'll see that they're designated here, look, with the W. Uh, AF, uh, um, British Standard nuts and Whitworth nuts can all be dressed and tightened with Whitworth spanners. You don't have to buy BSF spanners. Now, <clears throat> uh, there's a very neat formula here uh, for arriving at a spanner size for a particular nut. A lot of the nuts on the Gardner engine are 5 16th. And what you do is you subtract a 16th. Now, <clears throat> 1 16th away from 5 16th is 4 16th, which is a quarter. So if I want to loosen a nut, a 5 16th nut, I use a quarter spanner. Now, I find this to be very, very, very interesting because it means that the old-fashioned mechanics back in the 1950s, right up until 70s or thereabouts, could work these fractions out in their heads. Uh, back in pre-metric days, joiners, plumbers, fitters could do fraction calculations in their head quite effortlessly. Um, school kids now, even, even uh, <coughs> quite advanced students, we're lucky if they even know what a fraction is, never mind do fraction calculations in their head. But I'm, I'm digressing a bit. Um, <clears throat> the nuts, as I explained, are BSF, where there's a lot of vibration, and Whitworth, where there's not so much vibration. Now, again, there's nuts and there's nuts. Here's two nuts. They're both uh, stipulated as half inch. This is a proper half inch original head nut. This is a nut um, of the same specification on paper. There's a world of difference in the, in the quality. This is a modern nut. This is your traditional old fashioned nut. This nut very often we find will not pull up the torque on a head that this one will. It'll just ring. So be very careful about that. If you're buying nuts, make sure you buy really top quality original um, original specified uh, nuts as specified by Gardner. Otherwise, you'll be in trouble. Um, we have a rule of thumb here where if we're trying to deal with any nut, our hierarchy is, first of all, socket. Try and use a socket if you can, if you can get a socket in there, if you've got one available. If you don't have a socket, then use a ring spanner. If you don't have a ring spanner, then use an open end. If you don't have an open end, then use an adjustable. Yuck, horrible yucks. They're not very accurate, they're sloppy. But sometimes if you're stuck, you have to use them. If you haven't got an adjustable, then, oh, whoa, 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 you might use a vice grips, but that's, that's extraordinary. And even more extraordinary would be to use something like a Stilson spanner on a nut. That's really a, really a no-no. So try to use the right, the right spanners. Um, that's about it. You really, if you're working on Gardner engines on an everyday basis or if you're an owner, you actually don't need very many spanners. You can go onto the internet and you can buy yourself a nice set of spanners all the way from 11 16th down to 8th and it'll do most of your everyday work and they're not expensive. The same thing is true of a socket set. You buy a socket set like this, a proper Whitworth socket set, really quite cheap and again they're a super job and they'll save you so much grief. As I said you'll get away with a metric set up to a point but they're not kosher. It's not really proper. Now before I leave and to add more complexity there's another spanner set and that's these chaps here. Generally speaking for small screws and nuts um, you'll find BA. Now there aren't so many of those in Gardner, but the screws in the sump that hold the gauze down into the sump, they're BA. There's one or two BA screws on the injector pump. Um, electrical fittings can very often be, be, uh, can be BA. BA stands for British Association. And um, 
very popular in amongst model makers and, and uh, people building small steam engines and so on. So that's it. That's the story about the spanners. Really intriguing historical stuff. And uh, I hope you find that of benefit. Thank you so much.